Wingy Boxing, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. Now, I ain't talking Spider-Man, but I am here with the Kingpin. Kevin Johnson, what's going on, Kevin? How you feeling, brother? Feel some type of way, man. Coogan ain't dead to do me like this, but, you know, if he ain't want to see me no more, you know what I'm saying? You know, a little bit of racism or anything like that. He ain't had to do his like that, man. He always come see me, my man 50 grand. I thought he was my man 50 grand. Now I know, he, now I know he my man 40 grand. He reminded me of what Tommy Egan did the ghost on power. But we're going to talk about that later. You disappointed he sent you the spare wheel, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, like, brother. Cookie. Thanks, brother. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Usually I get a walking wagon, something G14, Class 5, P44, short, central, and sexy, something like that. You know what I'm saying? That's a good recommendation. He just lost two stars for that, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, he just did, man. He sent London back three states. I'm telling you, he really did. He you, did it. You're fighting Daniel Dubois on the Jack Catterall Ahara Davis card. Daniel Dubois, how do you rate him? You've, you've been around the block when it comes to heavyweights. From what you've seen so far, what do, you, what, what do you think of Daniel? I can't give anything because you're talking about a kid who's 8 and 0, who's just known for knocking out his eight opponents, and he haven't been anywhere for anybody. All he had is probably his extensive amateur record, and no pros look at the amateurs. I heard that a long time ago. Amateurs don't count in the pros, so people ask me to tell me what I think about him. He ain't fight nobody yet. Now, after he fight me, there's evaluation for him. Me, I'm just gonna come in and get the job done. But there's nothing for anybody to evaluate from him right now. Nothing. I'm trying to work out what type of Kevin Johnson we're gonna see in that ring. Um, Very explosive. That's all I've been working on. Explosiveness. Because some people, I think some people are sort of thinking, what you know is, what stage is Kevin at at this stage? I know. I apologize. Not not disrespectful. Do you know no, what I'm trying I apologize to say? for everybody for this performance just showing up. I'm like, well, why he didn't do it against Klitschko? Why he didn't do it against this person? Why he didn't do it against that one? Why I find it at the age of 39? I don't know. I can't answer that one. I just know for a fact it's going to be an all-star performance right here, man. This will be. Do you still have love for the game, Kevin? Of course. Too much. But at the end of the day, it's not how much I got left. I got too much left with you guys to see Saturday night. And by me beating an 8-0 guy, really don't say much. But I went in and did the job I was supposed to do. Not much supposed to get off of that and made him go back home and reevaluate his career, which is supposed to happen. But for me, I'm getting ready for 2019. I'll be promoting in Germany. So um, starting February, I have my first fight card, February, March, May, and uh, June. I got four fights coming up in um, Germany that I'll be promoting to pave way to society for the young kids who really want a shot in the fight game. A lot has changed in America and over here in the UK and in Europe. I really want to, it's here now, so why not come and be a part of it? So I got a couple, I have a fighter in Germany, Christian Hiller. I have business partners and associates and sponsors in Germany. And um, we're going, we're already full throttle. We have our arena. We have the vendor and venues. We have um, everything. February will be my first fight card. I look forward to fighting on my own fight card. But at the end of the day, once I start fighting on my own fight card, it's not to build myself up or to do, to get highway robberies, I'm really building myself out of boxing. But at the end of the day, I'm scratching my itch of still wanting to fight. I think um, it can be a little bit concerning for fans when you're talking about uh, uh, other plans beyond boxing because they're gonna, obviously only you know what's in your heart, but they're gonna think, is he really going in this to win? Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? That's why I say I'm not doing it to pave my way yeah. to get another title shot. I'm going to get one regardless. I beat this kid, there's a, there's, a, there's a top 10 opponent waiting for me yeah. right now. So once I made it to the level I made it to, like, I just, I just fought and won for the IBO, was robbed of it because of a cut. I fought for the IBF in Australia, I won that one. You can never count me out. I'm always yeah. a title shot away. Just like that. I'm, the only, I'm, I'm about the only guy that'll go to anybody's backyard and take any opportunity and come out on top with it. I've, I'm known for doing that, so that's why people know you can't count me out. But at the end of the day, my track record is what happened in the past. You know, there's some, there's a lot of good fights on my resume that I won. Manuel Char, Christian, Christian Hiller. Those fights, I beat the dog breaks out of them. Derek Chisora should have been disqualified 66 times. I left, I, I couldn't even leave London. Had the biggest knot in the back of my head. Couldn't leave for two weeks. Just from, but I'm only going into promoting because I have more, I have a lot of fans, but I have more friends who really want the opportunity to make a pro debut who really want a safe and secure um, boxing career. I know how it is. I don't deal with every promoter in the world. I mean, fighters can say that. I've been with every, I've been dealt with every promotional, con even Frank Warren. I've dealt with every promoter in the whole world. 
So I know the game inside and out from fighter and from promotional side. I really want to pave the way. I, it's, some, it's some young people that I know that would like to have the right pro career. I'm not looking to get rich. I have a good cargo van company in the States and I have a good real estate company in the States. I'm already pretty good already, but this is just, you say boxing, as long as I know I'm promoting the boxing, it, it, I think, I think, I'm just guesstimating, not estimating, I'm guesstimating. I think it'll satisfy my itch to just, oh, there's people that stand the game for no reason to take so much damage, uh, pesterize and worry their family with their well-being. It's, they've been past the safety line. I'm not ever going to cross that. Fans ain't going to worry about that. Your family sometimes worry about that because there's not a, always a bigger dollar to over, over, overvalue the view of a fighter's career. But one thing I take in consideration is, I know for a fact Father Tom ain't in my place, I mean, he ain't on my side, and you must have something before your career's over. Some people wait for that one punch or that one loss, or they wait to see if there's something big to come, which never come. I got friends, Owen Beck, Larry Donald, those are good friends of mine. I cried to know their career. I cried, I was over in Germany, I cried when I found out how they, when, when Larry Donald beat, beat um, Holyfield, how his career ended. I cried from that. These are guys who still had it. And it never came around. I still see these guys right now in situations and places that they shouldn't be in. Tyson Fury, mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Joshua. It, it, it's a fight which eventually we want to see. You're obviously qualified to speak on these two opponents with regards to their styles and skills. How do you see that matchup going? Obviously, you, you know you can you can speak on that in, in particular. I mean, Tyson Fury has one thing that many people can't beat. It's not skill. Anthony Joshua. Definitely the better skillful fighter. Um, but Tyson Fury is so long and in the safety zone with that reach and that movement, he's in the safety zone. He made Vladimir, he made Vladimir Klitschko look like a, a A plus amateur. Not, not because he had more skill. Everybody know for a fact Vladimir would knock Fury out. And I told Fury this in, in training camp uh, when I was in Bolton. I said, if you wasn't so long and wasn't doing all that movement, I'd knock you out easily. But you gotta get past that reach of that. He's in a, it's like giving somebody a sniper rifle and asking somebody that's 20 yards away to run up on me. I, of course I ain't gonna make it. I like how you say safety zone. I never heard that described Beyond that the safety. Yeah. He is, yeah, he, yeah, and his yeah. safety zone is so good and he know it. That's why somebody said his psychology, he don't have psychology. He's so comfortable in the safety zone that he can have a verbal game in the ring. Cause oh, yeah. I do it in the ring. When I know when I'm dealing with certain distances from people, I've turned my back in fights and looked away when I, cause I know the distance. He got such a, I got an 83 and a half inch reach. This man is probably what, 90s? What did you think of uh, Anthony Joshua's performance against Povetkin? Um, Shocking, dude. I did not, knowing that I, I was in uh, Chekhov, Russia um, with uh, Povetkin. Yeah. And I've been in there with Povetkin, man. And I did not think, it would end like that. I said if anybody's going to give him a tough challenge, it was definitely going to be Povetkin. Because everybody know Povetkin. He's definitely not no tailor-made opponent. You can't, you can't ever say you're going to take a fight with Povetkin and you're going to knock him out. Or he's an alright fighter. I give Povetkin his props. He's definitely a great fighter and great and boxer. You, everybody know that. I didn't think it would end like that. And it was shocking. Definitely, I didn't think, but I see what that's what that's what it takes. That's when you got a good team around you. I give Anthony Joshua team all the props in the world for the strategy they use with his left hook in that fight. If you look back on that fight, I can play it like ball day in my mind. He took Vladimir's left hook, which we call a check hook, and he utilized it like no other heavyweight but me, Vladimir, and him. It's no. called a check hook. He, you, when you don't want to use your jab because someone's blocking it so much, you use the check. It's a form. It's not a hook. And it's not a jab. It got power in it. He, you, they, they did a hell of a strategic method on it. He got a smart team. That, that tells you how brilliant they are. In 2009, the Vitaly Klitschko, the, the, the fight that you had, the loss, did things sort of go wrong for you after that? Because you've had wins since, and obviously. But yeah. Like, because I remember coming up your career, the speed, I remember watching, everybody was like, you was like, the, literally going to be the next big thing. Yeah. Did things go wrong for you after that, or what, what, what went wrong with well, the losses? I'll tell you the truth, and I, nobody ever noticed, but five people around me. During the Vitaly Klitschko fight, five weeks before the fight, I got injured. That's why I never threw my right hand in the fight. Got injured. So we said we're going to call him up. And... Tell them I'm injured, can we push the fight date back? And when I heard what they said, which was, shit, we're going to find another opponent. So it just came down to it. I told my corner, I took so much 
This took so much from over hyper extension and throwing it out. It was done. If you watch the fight, I can throw that one right hand. I couldn't. For one reason, I had a left hand that was at. And I couldn't let him know that because then he'd jump in and hurt me bad. But, yeah. So I couldn't let that be known. But I definitely wanted to get into the ring and take on the opportunity of a lifetime. And um, I had so many difficult, so much difficulties dealing with my corner. That's why after that fight, I got rid of everybody. Okay. And then what I, when I got, I shouldn't have did it like that. What I should have did was evaluated him, kept him, but brought somebody else on. For prime example, this is how stupid it was at the time. Angelo Dundee reached out to me before the Vitaly Klitschko training camp. He said, kid, before I die, I would like to see another heavyweight champion from America. I would, I would like to see you win this fight. I will volunteer my time to come and help you in your training camp, which he's in Florida. And his wife, who's his best friend, who he, at that time, he would never leave her side. He said, I'll give you what I can give you here, but I can't go with you to Switzerland. I said, wow, that's a dream come true for me. The type of coin I had, they said, uh-uh. So at that point, it really evaluated. I had the man, it was like a guardian angel being sent to you. Who turns that down? You're stupid. Of course, yeah. And the corner I had was so eagle struck. That's all it was about. Kevin Johnson only won the fight because Angelo Dundee. These are what they were thinking. We, we paid the way to get here. It don't, it don't matter. We won, we won. We're still together, the group. So I should have evaluated them instead of kicking them to the curve and found somebody else. And at that time, I still was fighting. I stopped training. I stopped. I'll tell you the truth. I, I fought Tyson Fury. They called me eight days before the fight for him. Derek Chisora, ten days for him. Uh, Manuel Char, three and a half weeks for him. I didn't try. I, didn't, I wasn't training. Wait, what, why not specifically? If you can I have a corner. No corner? Mm -mm. I if you look at all them fights, look who's in the corner. Wow. You'll see. Like I had Jeff Mayweather for one. I had um, Yaya McClain for another one. Um, I had... Somebody else for another one. Did you just lose motivation to go out and see? I lost corner? motivation to go to the gym. The gym is what motivated. The gym kept me out the streets. And it motivated me to want better for myself. I was a, growing up, I was a kid. I was a hustler. All we did was sold drugs, made money, and that was it. That was motivation in the streets. Boxing took me out of that. 90%, if you Google Asbury Park, Asbury Park is known for the most drug raised in New Jersey. That's all everybody knows. You're born into it. Your, your uncles, your brothers, your cousins, that's all they do. Everybody do it. It's just a first-hand nature. F forget school. That's your first-hand schooling right there. So boxing, that's been good to you then, isn't it? Boxing, man, took me, took me around the world. Um, gave me custody of my daughter at the age of four. Raised her for 16 years. Blessed me with a house and multiple cars. Got my own two companies. Um, the king of Asbury Park in real estate. Uh, got my own trans uh, cargo trans transport company in North Carolina. So I'm between three states all month long. While I'm here, I'm... I'm not losing money, but while I'm here training and fighting, you know, it's a decision that I made that I still want to, it's still a desire there. And that's why I want to go into promotion. It's the Daniel Dubois fight. I think, you're, you're quite candid and honest. I don't think you'll mind me asking. Is it a fight you're going in there genuinely to win or is it like a payday? You're going to try your best kind of nah, thing? Nah, shoot. I get paid 16000 a month just standing in the United States. Right. This wasn't no money. It was about money. You're That's just from one company. My transport company brings in 4000 a week. So you're seeing that this opportunity, this win over Daniel Dubois, if you can get that win, the doors are open for you. Not if. When, so excuse me. My, my, tra my transport company, I bring in 4000 a week. My real estate company, I bring in about $5,200 a month. Okay. 52 If it's about the money. I think I pay myself more than I probably get in boxing. Okay. Okay, so that's, about the money. that's good. That's interesting then. It's okay. not about the money. Far from about the money. And just for me getting here, I had to take a pay cut back at home. So did I win? Did I come here just for a check when I won at home already? Yeah. I won. Um, what do you think of Deontay Wilder overall as a character? You've seen the press love conferences. Him, man. I mean, I love him. Like, see, they should get Kevin Johnson in the mix in that press conferences, man. That'd be great, wouldn't it? He, he, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm definitely going to be there. Because, um, see, a lot of people speak about fighters inside the ring. Every fight I talk about, I know outside the ring person. Anthony Joshua, we, we, we became friends before the fight. You know? Dylan White, before the fight, friends. Uh, um, Deontay Wilder, when he lived in Birmingham, 40 minutes from me, I lived in Douglasville, Georgia, where he couldn't get no boxing. Nobody wanted to box with his hard hitting behind. Every Saturday and Sunday, whether I was out partying, strip club, hungover, he was in that cane all the way to my town to Douglasville to get boxing. 
I go to that gym. Some some days I wore ass with him. Mm. I just I forgot he was coming. I got a hangover. I just got out some strip club clothes at four. He's showing up at ten in the morning. He said, I still got Hennessy on my breath. He said strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, strip club clothes at four. I just got out from you know what, and I got a hangover. I'm weak as. Hey, I'm telling you, hit boy. But I was there for him. He know it. That's why every fight he had in Birmingham, I was right there, right there. Every fight he had at the Barclays Center, I was right there. Gerald Miller, Kevin Johnson, the press conference. Who wins out of the talking? Wait, which one? The Gerald Miller. Big Gerald baby. Miller? Big hey, baby. Can't nobody, I'm, I'm the king of the hill. Can't nobody get me. See, what they do is scripted. There's nothing in my whole career that I've never been one word short of. Do you like Gerald Miller? He's a good fighter, isn't he? Good, strong fighter. I can't say that. Who told you that? I've seen him. I think he looks good. After, after I beat this kid, I want you to give me an interview ringside. I definitely want that fight. And I'm definitely gonna shout. I'm definitely gonna shout him out just because of you. I'm gonna say your first and last name. Just because you think. <laughs> just because you think he's a good fighter, and I know he's not a good fighter. Nobody has exposed him yet. Okay. Nobody's exposed him. And ain't, ain't he down here in Florida with us? Jerry Miller. New York. Well, he down here. He, he in my neck of the woods then. Fine. We, we we go to Jersey and train for this one. It don't matter. It don't matter where he at. He nah. He's not. I think sometimes he comes down to Florida. I yeah. guess Florida's traveling for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he can get it. Just that's, that's, that's the fight I'm looking for after this. Everybody would try to go for... No, I want a guy like that. Guys that people think is... The, that's what I want to... I want to knock them off. I'm not in a rush to get back to no title fight. It comes, it comes. If I get one, I get one. I won already. I'm pretty much... Pretty much good. But I want guys like that. I'm not, okay, anybody can walk around and, yeah, I want Deontay Wilder. I want Anthony Joshua. I deserve another shot. Plus, I got a fight. I got four fights coming up in uh, 2019, the beginning of the year. I can go fight on all those cards and get four quick wins right there and two tune-ups. After this fight, I got six wins. I'm back in the mix right there. I don't want it that way. That's called the baby way. I want, after this fight, I want, I want Gerald Miller. There you got it. What's his name? Little Baby? Big Baby. Little Baby. I want Little Baby after this. That's who I want. That's, the per that's perfect right there. And, and I, I, expose, I expose him. I can expose the shit out of people when I'm 100%. What do you think of Deontay Wilder as a fighter? I got to give it to him, inside and outside the ring. I, first of all, I really give it off to him because, you know me, I'm huge. I, was, you know, I raised my daughter 60 years, single father. Wilder loves his daughter to pieces like me. And it's like a bond that no man will ever understand but a single father. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a father, like that right there. That, and then... He down there where I'm at, 30, 40 minutes further, but, and then his passion for boxing, as you see where it took him. We talking about back in 2008. See where his passion took him from then to now. His passion was so big. Like, nobody would do that drive religiously on a weekend like that, dude. Nobody. He, you, nobody would do it. He done it. You talking about off day. Your own, ain't nobody paying nothing. We showed up and paid each other with skill. Stylistically, Wilder and Tyson Fury in the ring, how does it play out? If Tyson Fury run and want to embarrass somebody, he can embarrass you. Do you think he could win that fight in points? He can run and win. He not going to outbox Fury. I mean, Wilder. Mm. He not going to outbox Anthony Joshua. But if he do that run, look what he did to an A-plus fighter. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. He's, he, can, he can run and move safely around the whole ring. and not get. He's the only fighter I know that can probably run for four rounds and you won't touch him. I know this. I've been there with him for years out in Bolton and up in Canada. I've been there. And it's, it's not many people can slip my jab. I have the fastest jab in the heavyweight division. Not many people can slip it. When he run, he's not touching him with nothing. Because he's running. He don't want to get touched. And he's in that safety zone. You know? Well, it's been fascinating speaking to you, Kevin. I've got all these questions flashing from my head, but I'm going to let you go. Nah, you go ahead, man. But you tell Coogan, I said, I don't like how he did what he did, what he did, what he do, how he do, what he do, when he do. But you tell him, I holler at him, though. I'm going to get his address. I'm going to Google him, find him on Wikipedia, MySpace, your space, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is. I'm going to holler at him, bro. You ain't had to, bro, I'm telling you, man. Because, see, he knew if I, he would have came, he probably would have had something 5'5", 125, fine, light skin, 42, <clears throat> in the building. He knows she would have came. I definitely would have been on it. Something sweet, sensual, and sexy, cool, calm, collected. You know, I would have been on it with P44, G14 class. That's Spitting the lyrics. Was, you know what I'm but <laughs> at the end of the day, tell Cougar he ain't got to be worried like that. We're supposed to be boys. I'm not a threat anymore. Tell him he can show up in the theater near me so I can be in the hood near him. He ain't got to do me like that. Cougar, that's messed up, dude. I'm telling you right now. Can I say what I want to say? Go for it. Cougar, you fucked up, man. You's a fake. Everything that start with an F. Fake, fraudulent, fucked up piece of 
You're my man, 50 grand, dog. I love you, man. <laughs> shout out to Coogan, man. Shout out. Big shout out to my man, Coogan, man. I love him, man. I love you, man. I love. That's why I'm so mad he ain't come. I love him so much. I love seeing him. And I always get a UK welcome from him, man. Always. Now that I can get a UK welcome, it's like, was that a black cat? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. I love you, man. Definitely. Kevin John. And I love you too for coming to one of I was about to say, at least, thanks, man. Hey, okay. at, least, at least he didn't leave me out high and dry. He did send his right hand man 50 grand. So I, I wanted to interview myself, man. I wanted to interview myself, man. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kevin, thanks for speaking to Wingy Boxing IFL TV. And uh, good luck in the fight. And we look forward to seeing that. Seeing you in the future, man. Yes, sir. All the best. Thank you, brother. Thank you.